who's the clear-cut favourite and head of Helsingborg. Dan Nikolic rides the WA sprinter Polygram. Well, firstly, Danny, Dash for Cash didn't disappoint you today. Sadly, he's off to... So, let's have a look over here at the uh, 1,200 metres. And they're about to move into the stores. This race is worth $70,000. It's a listed event, the Marriott Hotel's Hallmark Stakes. Can he fly? Won it 12 months ago. Chris Muntz beat Palladium Star and Polygram. And they're about to move in for this sprint and polygram over from Western Australia. Running third in it 12 months ago. Now coming up riderless is Stormcat Academy. Gee, if he could find his old form, he'd be hard to beat. Stormcat Academy, Lenny Beasley aboard. And Stormcat Academy first up. Lenny winning the Oaks on Sunday Joy, which would be a big thrill for him. Gee, I suppose it was touch and go after yesterday when he um, heard a leg coming out of the stalls in the first. But he's as tough as Teague Lenny and uh, he bounced back today. He had to miss about six rides yesterday after that occurrence. But here he is winning the Oaks today. Outside Sunday Joy, the All Age went to Arlington Road, Jim Cassidy beat Dash for Cash and Lord Essex. Fantastic beat Homewrecker in race five. The fourth, the Sassy Switch. Third, Bella Corona in a tight finish over Shamika. The second to Chester County. And Desert Sachet won the first. Now feel the noise goes into the gates. Here's the Duffersy horse coming forward. Moa Man are about to. Quite a few in the ownership, including the Duffersys. Helsenborg, a stable mate of Moa Man, walking up in Pompeii, for whom there has been a sprinkle of money, is going to be the last by the look of things. Haven't got a crowd figure as yet. Be interesting to uh, see how it tallies. As Pompeii goes into the stalls, and we're set now for the Marriott Hotels Australia Hallmark Stakes. Baghdad resuming today the popular pick, purple with white stars. They're off. Baghdad was last out, first to leave from the outside, Pompeii. Crop jumped into stride well and feel the noises rushing forward. Wider is Moa Man. Then Prince of Play followed by Baghdad picking up some lost territory. Stormcat Academy on the inside of Inspire and then Helsingborg and the Western Australian Grey as last polygram. Pompeii in front coming down to the 800. Narrowly from the field, the noise. Third crop, fourth Baghdad, fifth Prince of Play, Moa Man wide out, followed by Inspire. Then a length and a half, Stormcat Academy, Helsingborg and at a compact field, Polygram brings up the rear. 550 out now. And Pompey shows the way narrowly from field. The noise crop is out three and four wide. Baghdad sweating on a run. Prince of Play in the middle. And Moa Man is next. And then Inspire and Stormcat Academy. Pompey straightens up and got a break of about a length or so on crop. Baghdad on the inside. There's a mile of room. Field the noise is struggling. Moa Man battling on. Helsingborg. And now the grey from Western Australia. Polygram is zooming down the centre of the track. Polygram after Pompeii. Moa Man at Hilsenborg. Here's a go. Polygram is running right over them and Polygram will get the money. Polygram from either Hilsenborg or Moa Man. Then Pompeii, Stormcat Academy Inspire. Baghdad disappointed, followed by Crop and Prince of Play and feel the noise back at the tail of the field. Well, he's covered expenses all the way from the Golden West. Now, what's, uh, well, we just have a look here. Now, uh, phone, who was on the other end, Mick? Nobody. The ghost, the ghost caller. Polygram by Paluto, trained by Kerry Ward at Ascot for C. Obelisk and Miss C.K. Ward. It's a family horse part thereof. And having his uh, 25th start, his ninth win, and uh, they've earned... Uh, the connection's 45500 and uh, there's a nice profit on the costs of bringing him all the way from the West. Congratulations to those concerned. 7, 4, 1, 8 are the official placings. Polygram, Danny Nikolic first. Number four, second, Helsenborg. Darren Beatman riding the Danehill gelding for John Hawkes. Number one is third, Moa Man. By Procol Harum, John Hawkes, Corey Brown aboard. And number eight for the pick four, Pompeii. 7, 4, 1 at 8, the totes. Number seven. $11.10 and $3.20. And the full-page dividends are starting to come through. First four details, and that wraps up also the quaddy legs today. So one, seven, six, and seven. So that is all confirmed. 
All we have to confirm is uh, your should pay for the quaddy. First four with Pompeii and fourth, $2,721.80. Cup with Court of Jewels. Well, Tony, good to see you up this t uh, up in Brisbane this time of the year. I know it's not for the weather, but uh, Court of Jewels must have some chance for you to be here. Yes, Larry, uh, it's nice to be up here, of course. Fully related Court of Jewels also resuming. So many first up this afternoon. Alan Thomas, uh, this really does whet the appetite for the next two months ahead. It does, it does. And, and I'll tell you what whets the appetite. I just flicked the page here a moment ago and just had a look at the previous winners of this race. And I can tell you, Lord Essex won it last year. And then we've got Fritz Falvalon, Staging, General Nadim, Accomplice, Chief De Beers, C. Winnie, Bucks Pride twice, Barossa Boy St. Jude. Now that's from 1991 through to last year. And I'm here to tell you those names are about nearly as good as it gets. So uh, it certainly does set the scene. It is a scene setter. And um, we're in for an amazing carnival as per usual. And there will be plenty of visiting horses here and there will be quality horses as well. So Falvalon goes round again. He was beaten in this race by Lord Essex last year. And uh, he won the, the year or three years back in, uh, in the year 2000. I don't think he ran in 2001 behind Fritz. I don't think he ran that particular year. But he's got a good gait and he does look particularly well. The run won't hurt him. Gee, tit for tat looks well. It's the first time I've had a, a good look at this five-year-old. Got a great race record, 39 starts, 14 wins and 10 placings. So he's obviously a quality horse. Now here's Orn coming up to the gates now. Falvalon about to take up its position. Callaway Gal, well, she's the forgotten horse, isn't she? Callaway Gal, she hasn't won since the slipper and she didn't go too well, I didn't think, here the other day. Bruce Brown will be hoping for improved performance. Court of Jewels goes into the pinkish colours. They're all set, ready to go. Windham Estate Cup. They steady down. Attendant going in with one. Might be Callaway Gal. The lights are still on. No, it's Callaway Gal, I think, that's causing the trouble. Racing now. Court of Jewels near the inside began OK. Falvalon was well away in King Lotto and Orms going for speed in the early part. And Tit for Tat's going very fast from out wide in the run to the first corner with Pembledon. Gee, there's some speed on. Where Court of Jewels on the fence and King Lotto and Tit for Tat went up to make a line of three around the first corner. Orms is racing fourth. Falvalon back to fifth on the inside of Pembledon. Then Callaway Gal make mine magic. Bale Yabba's deep and then comes Diamond Dane followed then by Jar Jar Binks a long way back as Oscar Warrior and last of all is Sex Machine. 600 metres left to go. It's King Lotto on the inside and Tit for Tat. They led from Court of Jewels Racing third on from the middle. Bale Yabba's going up deep now. Falvalon's coming off the fence now. He's sixth turning for home as a corner. Make Mine Magic's on the fence as they wheel the bend. King Lotto led at the 300. Tit for Tat's outside it. Bale Yabba sprinting quickly. Oomphers in the middle. Make Mine Magic looks for the way through and here comes Falvalon with a big run and Falvalon shortly afterwards sprinter to the lead. Make Mine Magic the Grey got into second spot but Falvalon's racing away from Make Mine Magic and Falvalon beat Make Mine Magic and third's a photo either Diamond Dane or Bale Yabba. Over on the fence King Lotto. Tit for tat weakened behind those followed by Oomph and then came Jar Jar Binks Callaway Gal. Further back on the field came Oscar Warrior followed by Court of Jewels and then Six Machine and last time in the race is Pimbledon. Well how about that? Falvalon. Oh, dynamic. Absolutely dynamic. Alan Russell let him go. He was back fifth and sixth on the fence. Now, they did run that at a cracking pace. You wait till you see the sectionals. But I'm sure now he's an older horse, and I think they proved that. I think Damien Oliver proved it in the Stradbroke last year. He's a better horse now, ridden off to speed, and he's certainly a horse looking for longer. That was awesome, wasn't it? Falvalon on the Swan Song campaign, Larry Olsen. Well, we've got Danny Begore here. That was just awesome, wasn't it? He got the run through on the fence. That's the foal on the bowl, Dan. It certainly is, Larry. He got to the right part of the track. I thought, uh, had a talk with Alan, I just thought the inside was off a, off a fraction. Uh, got back where we wanted him, got to the outside and done the job great. In Melbourne, he tended to be getting back a bit far. Was that a concern? Well, he drew ordinary alleys in Melbourne and just had to ride in that fraction quiet. Uh, here, Doombin loves the track. Just... Getting a little bit older, 
you know, he just lost that bit early dash, but um, got in the right position, the right part of the track. Alan Russell giving the right ride, and now, of course, it's on to the 10,000, I don't know. the 10,000 now, Larry, and, um, you know, He's going to be very hard to beat in whatever he runs, I think. He's got a great future, hasn't he? Yeah. A stud coming up yeah. after that. He's going to get a just reward at the end. Good on you, mate. Thanks, You've trained Aaron. him well. Yep. Janet, this one, number 15, legible, opened up very short, and in fact is shorter on course than what it is on the tote at the moment. And so you know as much as I do, it's very, very short. Um, they want nothing else in the ring. Every other... Uh, ...away from harm's way and into the gate uh, adjacent to the uh, winning post here. Previous race won by Belovici. It was a good ride by Bryce Deckman. He's really putting it together lately. Had a couple of winners at Caulfield the other day. His tail's right up. A terrific ride. The fifth was won by Lethal Lee. The fourth was taken out by Western Waters for Wayne Hawkeye. The third by Steel King. First up winning easily. The second went to La Kiki. Chris Simons. And the first event today was won by Tendency with a stable Quinella for Matthew Ellerton. And ready and on their way. And uh, one of the first out, legible on the inside. Away fast early is Rose Girl as the Phillies and Mares sort themselves out down the straight the first time. JJ is going for the lead. Golden Shoe on the inside of her. Hot Girl is on the outside with Rose Girl deeper. And Legible is fifth right behind the leading bunch from Gypsy Fingers, first love. And they were followed by Indigo Rain as they leave the straight. Kamaya getting through on the inside. And towards the end is Theatre Goer and Lena Shee is last of all. Up to the 1500, Golden Shoe led. JJ is second. Legible gets the nice trail third on the inside. Hot Girl around her. Rose Girl three wide. Kamaya followed the favourite on the rails. Then Gypsy Fingers. Fingers first love a length and a half indigo rain. Theatre go is second last in the orange colours on the inside and two to Lena Shee. At the 1200 turn, Golden Shoe is the leader. Second is JJ Legible. Not so far back today. Third right behind the leader. Hot Girl are outside. Rose Girl still three wide. Two lengths Gypsy Fingers followed by Cormier who's about midfield on the inside followed by first love to Theatre Goer and then came indigo rain and three lengths to Lena Shee. Golden Shoe makes the run to the 800 turn about a neck in front. It's Golden Shoe in front of JJ. Rose Girl a length away in the field is Hot Girl a neck back on the inside is Legible within three of the leader at the very most. Then came Gypsy Fingers peeling out wide to start a run followed by First Love taking off as Indigo Rain. Cormier still followed the favourite on the rail. She's now back to third last from Theatre Goer and Lena Shee. Golden Shoe in front of JJ. Rose Girl Legible right behind them needing to get out of that pocket. Then Gypsy Fingers Indigo rain. Golden Shoe from JJ now legible. Gets the run just when she needs it and she should be able to finish them off. Coming around the turn now legible. Three deep on the outside. Move to Golden Shoe. JJ and a break back behind them. Theatre goer but legible. Let go now and she's bounded away from them. JJ's running on fairly well in second placing. Golden Shoe battling with Theatre goer and first love but legible bolted in. Legible by four. JJ second. Golden Shoe will give it to you for third from Theatre Goer and First Love wide. Next in was Cormier and they were followed by Lena Sheed and then came uh, Gypsy Fingers trailed behind these by Hot Girl, Indigo Rain and uh, Rose Girl after that hard run last of all. To double for Karen McAvoy, winning trainer Brad Mazzato and the Lloyd Williams colours to the fore with that Sabeel horse collecting the cash. 15-11 photo for third. And a popular Quinella result. The Quaddy Legs, 5, 5, 4 and 15. Four minutes off, the listed Rodelva Stakes at Cheltenham. And it's Super Groove uh, ahead of Sunday Shoes and Dantana in betting. The Nashra Willa Rider, all of the rage. We check over the page. Crest of Gold, the best of the rest ahead of uh, Otavia. There's the official dividends on the previous with that protest being dismissed. Lights on for the KPMG Stakes. Racing now. Sunday Shoes began fast. Good speed. Dantana going quickly. Wyndham Glory. They get across in front there early of Purus Cedar, Nequazi and Cobber Moose. From out wide working over Sunday Shoes trying to lead Dantana. Up there Crest of Gold being followed by Super Groove in the centre. Wyndham Glory the rails. Further back came Naden just ahead of it uh, as they come towards the 600 metre mark. Was uh, behind those on the inside Pura Cedar being followed by ACDC and Nequazi went out to the tail of the field as they make the home corner. They've got about 
about 400 metres left to go in the pilot. On the inside, Dan Tana of Sunday Shoes. Three wide, Otavia coming at them strongly. Super Groove behind it, tr trying to get into the clear is out now. The leader is Dan Tana from Sunday Shoes, running a great race. Otavia switching off their heels. Super Groove coming home now. Still Dan Tana, the leader, from on the outside, uh, coming at it late now with a, a close, is the favourite Super Groove, but Dan Tana does it all of the way. Dan Tana by a half length on the line. Super Groove a length away third was Sunday Shoes. Close up, ACDC wide out, ran on with Cobber Moose and Otavia, followed in by Crest of Gold, Pura Cedar. Further back in the field, uh, behind those, Dubai Ice and well back the others, headed in by Nakwazi, together there at the tail with Naden. 56.40 is the time. 56.40 and Dan Tana on a day where Rick Hall Lacey had produced two horses with uh, seemingly great chances of winning, uh, has come led in two second placings with those favoured runners. And here's Dan Tana at almost double figure odds. 880 and 260 leads all of the way. John Didham for Rick Hall Lacey by Dan Zero from Big Sky, Montana. Dan Tana has won it from Super Groove number four, Nashua Willer, Tony Noonan, and a gallant run by Sunday Shoes in third place. She, she's got plenty of speed too. Ben Claridge, Stuart Gower. Nice run, Cobber Moose. Coming home well, look out for him second up. But full credit here to Dan Tana. Win number six, lightly raced, 15 starts, and has been too good, leading all of the way in the KPMG. As we watch the head-on, all we await is the Quaddy dividend to be confirmed on 2, 2, 3 and 2 and the Unitab first four dividend shouldn't be too far away as well. Watching the head-on, uh, Dubai Ice with the white sleeves and maroon colours behind them and a couple of others rattling to the line, uh, producing good runs. But take nothing away from Dan Tana. Rick or Lacey's uh, star dash for cash retired after running second today and his other two runners at Cheltenham both finished as runners-up. Now, correct way... And the quaddies come through for Cheltenham. It's $1,532.90. Let's go back to Randwick for the late mail. The last race here on Oaks Day, race nine at Randwick. Numbers five, four, three and one. And they're off. Race number nine, Cognac Trader Jib missed to the length and a half. And Lasaz jumped quickly, headed immediately by our Archie's girl and Arabia. A length and a half further back is the Ruffy Kerouac, followed by Shaverni, then Sardar around Night Raider. And then Cognac Trader, followed by Aries, and last is Make Me a Miracle. Our Archie's girl is really scooting along in front and down by the 1200, opens up a length and a half to the Grey Mare from Newcastle, Arabia, two to Kerouac and a half the heavily supported Lasaz on the inner. About three lengths, Shaverni, and then Knight Raider who's parked inside Sardara. More than a length, the Cognac Trader at its quarters. The outside Aries and two lengths make me a miracle. They're not loafing in this as they work onto the side past the 900. And our Archie's girl specked in the market leads Arabia. Third is Kerouac, fourth Lazaz. Racing, fifth is Shaverni, followed by Knight Raider and Sardara. Then Cognac Trader and Aries. And four lengths to make me a miracle. Run off his legs in the early part. They have 700 left to run here. And the leader is still our Archie's girl. And out of the 600 goes our Archie's girl a length and a half on Arabia. Two lengths away to Lazaz inside of Kerouac and then Shaverni Sarder out of the other from Night Raider Cognac Trader Aries and three to make me a miracle. Into the straight at our Archie's girl. Up the rise comes our Archie's girl. Lazaz is into the clear followed by Arabia and then Sarder and Shaverni at a gap to Cognac Trader and Night Raider. Our Archie's girl surrendered and Lazaz in front but on the outside Arabia and now Cognac Trader starting to warm up but Lazaz has got about three quarters quarters of a length on Cognac Trader. Lazaz in front, he's switching the tail. Cognac Trader's overhauling him. Yes, he got him. Cognac Trader beat Lazaz. Third Aries, fourth Arabia, followed by Sardara, then Shaverni and Knight Raider. Further back, our Archie's girl has stopped to a walk and beat in the Ruffy Kerouac and make me a miracle last pretty well all the way. Cognac Trader, number four, has come with a very strong run. And has overhauled Lazaz in the last 20 metres of the event. And 420 and 180. Cognac Trader prepared by Bart Cummings. And the Cognac Trader by Hennessy from Morgan, a four year old chestnut gilding. And uh, certainly Hennessy stocks flying high with Grand Army and now with Cognac Trader. Raced by M. O'Keefe, W. Tenor, and L. Marks. And trained by Bart Cummings, written by Darrell McClellan, who rode him perfectly. 
Here are the numbers, four, five, nine and six in the last. Number four, Cognac trader D. McClellan first. Five, Lazaz by Pompey Court. Darren Beedman for John O'Shea second. Number nine, third, Aries by Octagonal. Trained by John Hawkes, Corey Brown aboard. And number six was the official fourth, Arabia. Four, five, nine, six on the tapes. Number four, has Pittsburgh Pike... comes down under the stud for the first time this spring. Late mail numbers are doing better, eight, four, two and five. More from there very, very soon. But as I see your shadow correct ways coming through at Doombin as we speak on 582, number one in fourth position. Just that first four dividend. Gary Baker for Jeff Burns. First four has paid $2,119.50, having just come through. Over the front of the gate there. Prosperous bid is standing well. Light flashes. They look ready now. All clear. They're racing in the last on the card. And undenied slow on the inside. Bardigo jump well. Bulbasaur out in a hurry trying to cross them from an outside barrier. Rusty Eyes is booting through on the inside. Prosperous Bitters just off the pace about midfield. But Bulbasaur, brilliant pace from an outside gate led. Rusty Eyes who pushes up on the fence. Bardigo settled down third. And Gazani is very deep in fourth, followed by K0. One undenied on the inside being trailed by Appian Way. One Prosperous Bid a length to Grand Central Milkshake and Ziegler. Last of all, Rusty Eyes on the rails, the leader from Bulbasaur, Gazania, 1 to K0. Happy and way a length away out wide on the course from Undenight and then Bardigo and Prosperous Bid. Six off the leader at the 200. Rusty Eyes and Bulbasaur leading Gazania and they've kicked away around the home turn. Undenight making some ground but Bulbasaur, this has been used of sustained speed. It's kicked right away here. Gazania running on strongly with K0 but Bulbasaur, that's a big win. Bulbasaur first, K0 second. And Rusty Eyes held third to Gazania, Grand Central and Prosperous Bit on the rail. Then came Milkshake, Ziegler, Undenight, Appian Way and Bardigo was last of all. That ran hard from an outside barrier and then uh, kicked away from them over the closing stages. Strong winning run, number five, Bulbasaur, 12.10 and $3.50. Kazira, $4.30. Rusty Eyes should hold the third at $2.90, so it's going to be a... A big trizy to finish off the day. Five, nine, and twelve. Fifty-eight point seven is the uh, winning time. Balbazor, trained by Charlie Goggin, and uh, this had the one run in this preparation uh, here, behind dangerous, uh, behind prosperous bit, and uh, comfortably was able to turn the tables with a big pull on the weights too of some four and a half kilos. I think uh, was the the weight turnaround. Second in from a spell. And uh, this Tasmanian galloper with David Perez over here. David started his career here. He's gone down to Taz. He's been riding plenty of winners. He's come back and uh, shown us his wares this afternoon with a good win. 5-9-12. Fourth in the final event. Number two was uh, Gazania. 5-9-12 and two in 58.7. Totes filtering through. Leave you uh, with Brendan to uh, tidy up all of those and we'll send weight down the line. Hope you found a winner at the Valley today. I look forward to joining you when we go racing at Warrnambool next week. Greg, it'll be a lot of fun at the Bull, and I know you'll be looking forward to that. The big team headed across there, and of course, live trackside Andrew Bensley on the Thursday afternoon on Sky. So, Bulbasaur. The